Hello web developers, uh, this is Sean and welcome to another walkthrough of a Watch 3020 JavaScript exercise. So uh, this, this is a little project called the Image Maker that is meant to help you practice your DOM manipulation skills. Um, so we're going to use all of the different uh, methods, or at least a lot of the different methods that we have available to us to select elements out of the DOM, to uh, modify attributes, to create elements, to um, add elements to the DOM, to change content of elements, all sorts of things like this. Uh, so in general, um, you know, our basic requirements are complete. The to-dos that we have in our JavaScript file, and we have some stretch goals that we can look at here. We'll return to these at the end of this. And um, I just want to give a quick shout out that we will be uh, using um, this DOM to image module. Uh, that's in the code that's provided to you, so you don't have to learn how to use it, but it is a good tool that is provided there. So if you're curious about how all this works, you could follow up a little more with that. Um, but for now, let's go ahead and get into the code to take a peek before we actually start working this. So uh, we're going to start here. We're at the SU Web Dev repository for this project. We're going to fork it to our personal account. And then once it forks over to our account, we will um, clone it to our local development environment. So I'm going to go ahead and come here and clone it. And then I will uh, go into this directory. And the first thing I'm going to do is open up the files in Sublime. Uh, which is my preferred text editor, but uh, you can use whatever text editor you wish to use. Uh, and we're going to take a quick look at the files, but before we do that, I'm just going to go ahead and get my um, Python little handy dandy Python simple HTTP server running so that I can pull this up in the browser. And I'm just going to take a look at what we have when we start it in the browser at first here. So what we can see here is that we're a, we have a blank page. We have uh, settings here. A little form here that allows us to set top text, bottom text, and background. And this little form um, really uh, is is what we're going to make work, and that's what's going to power it. And then where where the gray is here is where the image that we create will be shown. And then you have a little button to download the image, which will create a little download package for you. So it's a cute little um, application, and it's a lot like the sort of meme generators and stuff that you might have seen online. Uh, let's take a quick look at how we're going to get there uh, by reading some of this code. So if we uh, start looking through the uh, folders here, we'll start with CSS like we do so often. So this is CSS and we have a block here that is the image styles and then a block here that are the form styles. That is what controls most of the interface. Uh, you might want to change some of this stuff. But this is also, these are the, st the style attributes that you'll be setting with JavaScript um, as you uh, alter different parts of them um, to make the image different. So uh, keep in mind um, that that's how that's going to work out. Um, we also uh, have a directory of images here and we can see some images that we often see used in sort of the funny um, kind of meme images uh, that we're used to. And then uh, we have, I'm going to jump to index.html. So we have um, an index file here and the head is not too exciting, although it does bring in the extra JavaScript file to make that module available to us. Um, so that is in there. And then, um, and then we have a form right here uh, that is inside of a div called form container. And that's the form that we were looking at there in the web interface. And then we have a, a div here that is uh, with the ID image preview. And that, that will allow us to insert the image content into there so that we have something to show in our image content. So, uh, so that's basically how this thing is going to uh, sort of function at the CSS and HTML level. But let's go ahead and take a look at the JavaScript. So this JavaScript here, main.js, is where all of the, the JavaScript is to be done. And, um, and this is uh, full of instructions like we're used to. So if we take a quick look at it, we have a class that is image maker, which is defined. And it looks like we're going to do a bunch of work in the constructor function. And then we're going to make a draw preview method. 
Um, and then there's a download image method that is all there and that um, and that calls this generate image function. Um, so if we go down here, we see the do not edit below this line. So this is where all the supplied code is. So generate image is this function here and that handles uh, taking the image preview element and turning it into an image that you can then download. Uh, and then we have this apply event listeners function that applies the event listeners to all of the different input select and text area fields that might be in that form. And then it also applies an event listener to the form itself so that when the form is submitted, it will actually run the download image uh, function. And so, so that's what's happening in there is that that's putting on these event listeners. We'll talk about that in a future project. And then uh, the code just executes this apply event listener. So in the mainline execution of the code, you essentially just have the new uh, image maker class instantiated and it's just called image maker. And then we have um, the event listeners being applied to the HTML. So that's what we're starting with. Okay. We're going to go through this code and the first thing that we're going to do is populate some attributes and that's going to require us to actually create um, some, some elements and, um, and then alter their, their attributes and then append them uh, to different things so that we build up that image preview section. Then we're also going to um, populate some attributes on this class that are the inputs for our user provided input. And then uh, we're going to modify this draw preview function to add in the updates to all of those attributes based on the input. So it's not super complicated. It's really just strategic use of the same few commands over and over. But of course, uh, it can be a lot more difficult to, th to think about the logic that's going to happen. So when this image maker gets um, instantiated this constructor is going to run and it's going to set us up with all these relationships that we're going to populate and then every time there's a change um, in one of our form fields it's going to execute this draw preview function and that's going to just change the values that are being applied to the actual preview area on the page and that's what's going to allow us to change what the image looks like and then when we download the image it just converts that draw preview that that preview area into an image itself. So um, so that's basically where we're going with all of this and that's how we're putting together all of this. Uh, at this point you could stop and just try to work it yourself given the guidance and the comments but I'm going to actually start working through this and uh, and then at the end I'll cover a little bit more about um, some ideas for how to approach the stretch goals. So uh, if you want to have a, a, a pristine experience here, stop now and, uh, and try to work it on your own or watch through it and then try to come back and work it without referring back to it or watch through it and then work it as you watch it again. Um, all of those are completely legitimate ways to try to learn this stuff. So remember, practice makes perfect. So don't be afraid to throw it away and start over if you get yourself really turned around and, um, and it's worthwhile to actually do that. So um, the first thing that we need to do is set up the attributes in this uh, class. So we know that this class is going to get instantiated and the first thing we want to select the image preview element which is we know that because of this pound sign we know that's an ID and we'll get, we can use any document selector method. So I'll use the old-fashioned document .get element by ID and this um, this method just takes the ID name which is image dash preview. I don't even have to use um, the the pound sign at all um, in front of it here. And now I have selected that element on the page. So I know that image preview is this element that, that refers to the image preview uh, div. So now I need to create a new paragraph element and that is called um, top text. So this dot top text equals, so that's going to be document dot create element and that is just going to be a P because that's that's all that I want it to create. Then I want to add a class attribute um, that contains the class name top dash text. So I'm going to say this dot top text dot set attribute and I want to set the class attribute and the value I want to set to top text. So that's just going to apply that class to this attribute. So it's going to be like P class equals top text. Okay. 
then I'm going to append that to the image preview. So I'm going to say this dot image preview dot append child this dot top text. Great. So now I've done that. I'm going to basically do the exact same thing for bottom text. So I'm going to walk through it. First of all, I'm going to create a new paragraph element. Document dot create element. P. Then I'm going to add a class to this. So bottom text dot set attribute, class attribute. And this is bottom dash text. Those are both styled in the CSS file. So if you wanted to change the way that those look, you could change it in the CSS file. Or you could add more form fields that could even modify those styles further. And then we want to append it to this dot image preview. So this dot image preview dot append child this dot bottom text. So now we've appended the top text and the bottom text into the image preview. So we should have our image preview all set up there, right? Um, now we also need to use the form fields to read the user input. So we want to set those up for future use. And that means that we want to just select them and make them available on these class attributes. So background input, top text input, and bottom text input. Those are the three inputs that we have right now. So to do that, I'm going to say document dot, and I'm going to use the query selector. And the query selector, I'm going to say, um, I want to select the, for the background input, I know that that is a select element and it has a name attribute that equals background image, I believe. I'm going to verify it. I'm going to look here and see here. Yes, this select element has the name background image. That's where that is defined. So I'm going to say name here equals background image and that so this is the CSS selector that says give me a select element and then the attribute name equals background image so this that format is selecting a select element with an attribute called name that has the value background image and that's how we're going to select these um, it's way easier to use uh, the CSS selector although this text input if we look here it's not a select the the text input is going to be just an input and the name is top text and then over here the name is bottom text so we're going to use the same style of CSS selector except for it's going to be for an input and name equals top text and then we're going to come down here and we're going to do the same thing for the other input tag and that name equals bottom text and I'm using double quotes around that so that it fits inside of the single quote here I could flip-flop those um, but remember, that's how, uh, that's how quote escaping works. You can use uh, the opposite quote inside of the other quote. So now here we are, and we are ready to begin working on the actual preview drawing because what we've done now is we have uh, initialized all these things. We've created these elements. They will be created in the HTML. Um, and then we will... Uh, we, we can draw them. Now what we can see currently if we go back to our running HTML here and we refresh we should be able to see in this HTML if we actually inspect it that in the image preview here we now have the paragraph top text and the paragraph bottom text. So that didn't exist before. Remember when we looked at the original files here in the index.html as we can see here, there is no top text or bottom text in here. So now we have top text and bottom text in here properly and they have the proper class assigned to them. So we know that our code changes were working properly. So that is, that is an excellent thing. Now we can get back into uh, editing this draw preview. And so this draw preview is pretty straightforward actually. All we need to do is update uh, three values 
in these um, things that we've already set up up here. So we've done most of the work up here to just make all of this available. So now what we can do is um, we want to update the background image CSS property for this dot image preview. So what we want to do is say this dot image preview and then we know that the the CSS properties are going to be um, in under style the style object and then we know that background dash image is going to turn into background image with a capital I in JavaScript because the dash image is not a legitimate uh, name for a, an object attribute in JavaScript so we're going to use background capital I image that's the camel case version of that phrase and we're going to set that equal to um, some text and the text uh, needs to be a little bit complicated so I'm going to go ahead and make it a template literal and that's going to be our URL tag and um, our images path is going to be images slash because remember this path will be relative to the index.html because JavaScript is writing this style directly on the tag so it's going to be relative to our index.html so it'll be images slash and then it's going to be the value of this dot background input which this dot background input if we look here we can see that there are value attributes on here and we can also see that over here they're empty but I put them here just so we can see them they're on the input tags as well these value attributes so if we just reference that attribute then that is the value of that selection that was made so that would be whatever that value was. So notice that the value here is like dog.jpg, fry.jpg, and that matches the file names that we see over here. So, so these values will fill in. So it will say images slash whatever the image is, dog.jpg or whatever, right? And then we need a closing parentheses there. And that is the URL for the background image. Uh, which is the only part of that that we're defining. We defined everything else about how the background should be in the CSS, which is usually the way you do it. You don't want to define a lot of styles in CSS. You just define the only the aspects that you need to. Um, now we're going to say this dot top text, and we're going to set that equal to. Oh, that needs to be have the inner HTML set equal to whatever the top text input here whatever value that has in it. So we can just reference the value attribute like that. And then basically we do the exact same thing for bottom index. We have this dot bottom text dot inner HTML equals this dot bottom text input dot value. So now we've taken the values from all three. We've taken the background input value the top text input value and the bottom text input value and we've used those values to modify the the settings of these other attributes that we have so the image preview background image style the top text inner HTML and the bottom text inner HTML and once we update those it will change on our page so if we save this we should effectively have a working image generator now so let's go ahead and take a peek here. Um, I will uh, make this a little bit smaller so we can still see any errors that come up. But we're going to refresh here. And oh, I still have a. All right, I'm going to refresh here. <laughs> Had a little breakpoint set from earlier testing. And with the te top text, I'm going to say, hello world. And as soon as I tabbed out of that, I accidentally hit tab. I actually meant to hit shift, but um, it, it updated. And you notice that it, it selected the background dog. We could say, okay, give us, oh, there's the He-Man background. There's the Picard background. Um, we also have, um, yay, for working. And if we click out of there, it comes up there. So we have everything is working here. And then if we uh, actually... Um, if we actually download this image, then the image downloads and we can actually uh, open it up here. And here you can see that this is the image actually in 
in preview. Let me shrink it up and bring it in here. So here we are with the with the JPEG in preview. It's been named with a timestamp and everything. Um, and here we are with it here. Um, it is a lovely. Um, it is a lovely image generator here. So we can uh, take a look at all of this. We can um, generate images to our heart's content and we'll be able to have a good time making memes or generating our social media campaigns or anything else. So now, um, now that we're finished with the project, we can run through our usual um, process of figuring out what did we change. We only changed that main.js file, so I'm going to add that. I'm going to commit it. I am then going to make a new branch, get checkout dash b gh dash pages, um, and then I'm going to do a push dash u, which updates the remote reference to connect everything up here, but it also pushes it up to GH pages so that then I can come and I can go here to my settings and seeing that it is it is in the process of being published and in fact here it goes so we have uh, a little image that we can then put the appropriate image onto and download for usage on our media stream. So um, that is pretty exciting. I wanna just uh, make sure that we um, take a look at the stretch goals before we leave off here. Um, so you can add a lot more ways to change existing elements. You can experiment with input type color to allow somebody to pick the color of the text. You could allow people to pick the font size or the font family. Um, you could uh, populate with different custom images. You could um, enhance the presentation of the form itself. You could uh, add additional elements to the image composition. So maybe you wanna add a watermark or um, a URL or something like that that goes down in the corner. Um, or you could even allow people to select the size of the image to output. If you notice in the JavaScript file here, even um, at the very beginning, uh, we have um, in this generate image, it is has default values of 800 by 1280 uh, pixels. We can then, um, uh, you could send in a different value from up here in download image based on something that you read out of the uh, form, and then you could uh, easily generate the image to size for the user. So. Um, at any rate, have a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy making images and, uh, and building this little project, and I hope it helps you learn a lot about uh, DOM manipulation, uh, selecting items from the DOM, modifying them, and uh, replacing them. So take care, everybody. Have a great time. Good luck.